Before we go ahead and get started, I just want to be clear in that this is only the second half of the course overview. The first half was uploaded last week, so for this video, I'm only going to be covering content from after the midterm onwards. The next assignment is Market Sim, which you basically program a market simulator that takes in a set of orders and outputs the resulting value of your portfolio for each day based on those orders. I would say this is like a medium in terms of difficulty compared to other assignments, maybe medium to difficult, but it's not too bad. And this is something that you want to get right because you're using this code again for later projects in the semester. The next assignment is project six, which is called indicator evaluation. This assignment can definitely eat up a lot of your time, depending how much time you put into research, because the first portion of the assignment is picking five technical indicators. Technical indicators are basically just signals to buy or sell a stock, or at least for the purposes of this class. And if you research a bunch of them, it could take a lot of time, but I basically just chose five that I thought would be the easiest. You do have to choose them somewhat wisely because there is a report for this project and you have to explain your rationale in choosing them, which obviously I didn't want to say because I thought they were easiest. You know, there has to be some rationale in why you think the technical indicator will work in hopefully allowing you to maximize the profits that you get from your buys and sells. On top of that, there is a second portion of the assignment, which is developing and implementing a theoretically optimal strategy for a given symbol and period. It takes a little while to think of it, I guess, but once you figure out the theoretically optimal strategy, it'll kind of click and it's nice because it is deterministic, so there is a definite right answer. And this is definitely a project that you should expect to budget your time wisely for. Project 7 is the second to last course and it covers Q-learning. Basically, this is the reinforcement learning section of the course. I would say it's probably on the more difficult side, but largely it's because of the content and not the actual coding aspect. I had to rewatch the lectures a couple of times, even though I was already familiar with reinforcement learning at a very high level from machine learning. The good thing is you don't have to write a report, which is nice. And basically we're implementing Q-learning and a variation of Q-learning called DynaQ. And this is on a generic problem or a generic MDP. Specifically the test cases are for a grid world like navigating through a maze, which is kind of seems like the de facto MDP problem. But it's not until the next project where you can adapt it for the buy and sell stocks problem of this course. Last but not least, we have Project 8, which is what I consider to be the capstone of the project. It's very much a culmination of the previous assignments, and it really builds upon all of them. People seem to say that it's very time consuming or pretty difficult, but I actually didn't think that to be the case, but that's obviously under the assumption that you did well and understand the previous assignments. There's pretty much two portions of this assignment. Uh, the first is developing a manual strategy, which basically means you need to combine three technical indicators that you chose from project six and basically combine them to produce a single set of buy or sell actions. And then you use your market simulator that you coded in a previous assignment to evaluate that performance. Similarly, you have to build a strategy learner where you can either do a random forest learner or a Q learner. It seems like most people do random forest. I did the same just because I understand that approach with that algorithm a lot better than Q learning. And it also just seems more popular, so it's easier to get help. And uh, with that strategy learner, you're basically using the machine learning algorithm to devise when to buy and sell the stock. The last part is with the report and it basically dictates how you should go about analyzing, evaluating, and comparing and contrasting the performance of the two strategies. In addition, you compare it against a benchmark, which is basically just buying and holding the stock for the given period. Of course, there's the final exam to wrap everything up, 
and that's very, very similar to the midterm. So nothing to stress about. I'm not really going to add much more to that. But overall, I would just say this is a very rewarding course. It's quite enjoyable, not particularly difficult, but it's challenging enough to be rewarding. And I would say I was a little bit surprised by the workload, but I think that's pretty much thanks to me taking it in the summer where everything is condensed and a little bit faster. Overall, I would recommend this course. I took it after taking machine learning, so it was very much a review of machine learning concepts in a kind of stock market lens. I already had a decent understanding of a lot of the concepts covered in terms of trading in the stock market. So I didn't find it to be particularly difficult and I was definitely just happy to check it off because I only need one more machine learning specialization course. So almost there. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.